What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how to replant and care for my Faro Cactus Glaucessens. Alright, before we begin, I just want to take a couple minutes to explain where I've been the past couple of weeks. Uh, about two or three weeks ago, I got really sick, um, and I thought maybe it was COVID. Uh, but fortunately, it was not. Uh, I was in the hospital for a couple of days. Uh, my oxygen got really low. Uh, I think when I was admitted, it was around 84, and my fingers and toes started to turn blue. Uh, but like I said, I was tested for COVID and fortunately I did not have the coronavirus. Uh, but the latest theory with the doctors is that I had a cold and the allergy in this area, the pollen has been really high. Uh, so my asthma kind of took over and I really couldn't breathe. Uh, like I said, I was in the hospital for a couple of days. So I do want to thank all of you that reached out to make sure that I'm doing okay. Uh, I had a lot of friends and people comment and ask if I was okay and send messages. Uh, but I just wanted to thank all of you that did that and let you know that I am back after plenty of rest and recuperation uh, and I did get my corona vaccine so if you are able to do that make sure you do that as well uh, but like I said I had been gone for several weeks so I wanted to give you an explanation to let you know where I had been and let you know that I did not quit making videos but I was rather sick and took a little bit of time off to kind of rest and recuperate uh, and make sure that all my plants were doing as well also but I just wanted to let you all know that. Now, the common name for this cactus is the Blue Barrel Cactus. Um, and it is beautiful. I love this cactus. This has been one that I've wanted for a long time and finally got a year or two ago. And now it needs to be repotted. And I want to show you how to do that and how to care for the plant. Uh, now, this plant is native to the limestone hills of like around Hidalgo, Mexico. Uh, so it's pretty much endemic to around kind of central and eastern Mexico. Uh, so it is around from like the desert areas that are really kind of warm. Uh, don't get a whole bunch of uh, rain or moisture. Uh, but they are beautiful colors with that kind of uh, light sea foamish kind of bluish green skin and the kind of white spines. Uh, and they have anywhere from like 11 to 15 ribs that kind of hold water. Uh, but it is a clumping cactus. Uh, and as the cactus actually matures, you'll notice it'll actually get several heads and kind of form like a globular kind of shape. Uh, and the plant can get about two feet tall and about two feet wide. Uh, they are really slow gl uh, growing cacti. Uh, but like I said, as they get older, they kind of uh, get more heads on them are little pups that will actually kind of grow up to be other parts that you can actually harvest off the mother plant uh, and make it its, its own plant or you can kind of just leave it all kind of clumped together uh, and uh, it'll really kind of look spectacular as it gets older and larger. Uh, for the most part these cacti are really round um, and as they get a little bit older they do kind of like uh, stretch out almost kind of like a uh, a little bit of a column so it won't always be necessarily round uh, but like I said I really kind of fell in love with the spines uh, they really do look very sharp and they are very sharp um, and they are a really useful plant uh, the Native Americans used to use the cacti as a cooking vessel um, they would hollow out the inside and then place hot stones and food inside uh, the spines were used as awls in like tattooing uh, and they are also used as uh, needles also. Um, the pulp from the plant can actually be used to make cactus candy um, and you can actually boil some of the plant and eat a lot of it as well. Uh, so the plant is very non-toxic uh, except for those spines they will kind of hurt a little bit but that's really the only negative part of the plant uh, and then there are a lot of beneficial uh, factors to this cacti as well. The polyphenols that are present in this cactus have been used uh, here recently a lot. Uh, it actually helps improve digestion, brain function, and blood sugar levels, as well as providing a uh, protection against certain ailments, including cancers. Additionally, the plant also produces 
strong antibacterial properties and antifungal properties as well. So this is a very useful plant and has been useful for a long time uh, and is very beneficial to uh, ancient Native Americans and people nowadays as well. Now, getting into the care for this plant, I do want to say that it is a little different with me versus how it may be for you. Uh, the plant will actually need direct sunlight most of the day, although it can take a little bit of light shade. But you do want to actually put it, especially if it's indoors, in an area that does receive uh, bright direct light all day. You got to remember this is a cactus. This is from the deserts or hotter areas. Uh, in the world that do receive a lot of uh, direct sunlight all day, maybe just a little bit shade, a little bit of shade. It can take a little bit of shade, but mainly it does need to be in an area that does get at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight a day. <coughs> now, in the summertime, I always move mine outdoors. As soon as the danger of frost has passed, uh, the plant can take light frost maybe once or twice, uh, but if it does it a lot, you'll actually burn the ribs out and actually cause a little bit of damage to the plant, but it can take a light frost maybe once or twice. So just don't forget it whenever you need to move it back indoors for the winter time. Water with this plant uh, can be a little bit tricky only because you want the soil to dry out completely before you actually do go ahead and water it again. Uh, it is very susceptible to root rot, so you want to make sure that no water stands around the roots at all and let the soil, especially the soil in the middle of the pot, dry out completely before you uh, actually give it water again. So if you're not sure if you need to water your plant, go ahead and stick your finger down in the soil and if you feel any moisture whatsoever, I would hold off on watering the plant. Now, I went ahead and removed the plant from its pot for simplicity's sake, and I've got thick leather gloves to kind of help me with him, and I've got some cardboard off to the side to actually put another barrier between me, the gloves, and the cactus. So whenever you're doing this, you may need help with someone to actually hold the plant, uh, and you can use anything from pillows to blankets uh, to cardboard to gloves to newspaper and magazines. Anything that won't actually bend the spines and break the spines, uh, but also won't let that actually puncture your skin as well. So I've got to be very careful when handling him because his spines are very, very, very sharp. nothing just to kind of make sure I didn't actually need to add more soil in the bottom of the pot and I think I'm going to do that. Now I don't want him sitting down so far that uh, a lot of his skin is below the soil level. I want him to actually set up a little bit. So I'll add a little bit more in and then make a divot in the center of the pot for that little root mass to have some place to kind of sit. And as always, with cacti, you want to use soil that has a lot of washed sand in it. Uh, you want it to be washed sand to actually wash all those particles out of the soil and the sediment of that sand because it will actually build up in the soil and cause toxicity or salt levels to actually build up. Um, and then you want soil that is pretty lightweight, uh, that won't hold on to a bunch of water. And as we know, sand will not hold on to water at all. I've got about seven or eight drainage holes in the bottom of the pot so he won't hold on to water. There we go, yeah, it's, he's like high enough but I like where he's sitting. Now I'll use my soil scoop, just kind of add soil down in here around his root mass while holding him in place with the other hand and the cardboard and the gloves. Because he is a biter. <clears throat> All right, now as you start adding more soil in, you'll want to take care and use a little 
tool, maybe a, a butter knife or a spoon or a fork handle, and just kind of uh, press the soil down in <clears throat> around the spines here. You don't want to leave a whole bunch of air pockets down in here uh, that may wreak havoc on the roots potentially. So just kind of tamp the soil down. Take care to use your hand with gloves. And just be cautious. Don't ram it down in there. You'll break the spines off uh, and potentially do damage to the ribs. And as we know, when you tamp it down, you'll further anchor the plant in place. And if you have to tap down around the plant with your fingers, don't do it without protection like I am. Uh, but take care to push down and not down and under towards where the spines will actually poke you because you get a hold of one of those you'll know it it'll poke you right down to the bone and as I said there is no toxicity with these needles but they will puncture and the sheath may remain in your skin for a couple of days making it hurt and itch so make sure if you do puncture yourself you clean it out and as I said wear gloves but even with the gloves on you can still puncture through the leather gloves and poke the bone or at least it'll feel like you did now I know these guys don't like too much hummus in their soil as well so uh, I mean, selecting a good cacti soil, you'll want something that uh, doesn't contain a lot of hummus, but drains fairly quickly because he does not like salt water around his roots. Now the soil pH for these guys are slightly acidic to slightly alkaline anywhere from about <clears throat> anywhere from about 6.5 on up to 7.6 and they're right at home with the soil pH Okay, now I believe I've got the soil about where I want it. You don't want to compact it too tightly. You just want to kind of nuzzle down in there to where he'll have uh, a little bit of help kind of standing upright without kind of like dumping over or leaning to one side. So you just kind of want to make sure he is pretty level down in there. And as time goes on, the more you water it, uh, gravity will take over and kind of compact it down in there. Uh, but you do want to make sure that he does remain upright and watering on the initial plant will help secure him down in his pot uh, and hold him up and get rid of any other air bubbles that tamping may have missed. And additionally, if you like, you can add any kind of uh, rocks around here just to kind of give it more of a desert feel. That way you don't see a whole bunch of soil all the time. And now that he's in there, the only thing I have left to do would be to go ahead and water him just to kind of uh, help him stay down in there, remain upright, uh, get a little bit of moisture to his roots and kind of get him started on the right foot. Now I said, you really don't want to water him too much all you really want to do is just make sure the soil dries out completely uh, before giving him any more water. Uh, and if you water him too much, he will succumb to root rot. So always err on the side of caution and wait a couple of days if you're not sure on whether or not to water him. Especially being in a plastic pot like this, uh, it won't dry out as fast as a terracotta would. Uh, those are porous, uh, so they will kind of wick water away. Uh, but this guy, I went ahead and added several drainage holes towards the bottom to make sure that uh, he would not hold on to any water whatsoever. Uh, and I went with the kind of azalea pot, which happens to be wider than it is taller. Uh, that way he'll have plenty of room to kind of grow uh, because they do like ample room to kind of spread out. 
Uh, and like I said, they are slow growing plants, so he'll be good in this pot for up to three or four years. Uh, he is about a nine inch cactus, so this is a 12 inch pot, uh, and he's got a little bit of room to kind of bush out uh, and take over this plant, uh, this container, like I said, for the next couple of years, so he'll be good to go. All right, and for the past couple of weeks, I've been on a little cactus kick. <clears throat> so uh, be sure to like, check out my next video. I'm going to repot my silver torch cactus, uh, which is a massive columnar cactus that's about seven arms. Uh, so he's pretty big, and I want to take that on next. Uh, so be sure to check out that video. Um, and if you do know any other friends or family members who have one of these cacti and need to repot it or just uh, all around general information on this plant, feel free to share this video with them. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I wanted to say on this plant. Leave a comment and let me know what your favorite type of cactus is or how many you have. I think at last count I was around 37. And don't forget, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.